Teaching Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Microsoft often refers to Windows Azure as the operating system for the cloud. Exactly what does that mean? Well, let's look at what exactly does an operating system do. Say an operating system on our, as our Windows 7 or Windows Vista operating system does on our desktop. Essentially, an operating system helps abstract away the details of our hardware. For example, Windows 7 or Vista provides file management, security, task scheduling, and abstracting away all the details of access to memory and CPU and disk. That's what an operating system does for us on our desktop. And essentially, that's exactly the thing that Azure does for us in the cloud. Instead of abstracting away the details of our individual PC or individual desktop, the Azure operating system abstracts away the details of what is the fabric and the data centers that Microsoft provides. So it provides a set of APIs, a set of controllers to help manage our applications inside of that cloud. So Windows Azure is a collection of data centers, each running a collection of commodity hardware, the fabric. Some servers in that fabric provide for computation. Others provide for data storage. The fabric controller serves as the brains of that data center and of that fabric, managing the hardware and the applications that run on it. Your cloud application, called a service, in the form of web and worker roles, runs on that fabric, and its data is stored in the storage in triplicate. Requests for your service are distributed by an Azure load balancer, which again is managed and configured by the fabric controller. By the way, Microsoft also provided a web portal and management API for deploying and manage your applications and data in the cloud. So your service actually consists of two parts, as far as the cloud is concerned, that is, the service and the model. The service is your app, Azure application code that you want running in the cloud, and the model is essentially configuration information that you provide to the fabric controller that dictates how you want your service deployed and operating within the cloud. For example, it helps dictate the number of instances you want running of your service. You deploy your application, both the service and the model, through the web portal or a service management API. The Fabric Controller is given the model and uses it to determine how to get your service into the fabric. The service is deployed to that fabric. The Fabric Controller is also using your model to set up appropriate DNS entries and configuring load balancing for your service. Now I mentioned Azure and the cloud helps provide scalability. How does it do this? Well, your application starts to, I should say, if your application starts to see a large demand, you use the web portal or service management API to tell the fabric controller to provide more instances of your application in that fabric. Then, as demand weakens, you use that same portal or API to have the controller remove instances from the fabric. So you get capacity on demand as you need it, helping to eliminate or at least greatly reduce excess capacity or not enough capacity. Again, that fabric controller serves as the brains behind Windows Azure. As such, it also helps to monitor and provide recovery of your service in the fabric. So say for example, your service is running in the fabric, but one of the instances develops some sort of issues and goes down. The fabric controller deter uh, detects this, and once it detects it, brings another instance of your service back online. And of course, this is all done automatically. So what does Windows Azure cost? Well, for a complete picture, I encourage you to take a look at the Azure Return on Investment and Total Cost of Ownership calculator located at the URL you see on the screen. But to give you some ballparks, let's take a look at, first of all, compute. Those virtual machines that run your worker and web roles. 
the cost for the smallest uh, virtual machines, that is one CPU and 1.67 gigabytes of memory, cost 12 cents an hour. When you move up to an extra large instance, we're talking about 96 cents an hour. So as you can see, based on the size of the virtual machine instance you need, the costs are linear. Storage, blob, queue, and tables are priced per gigabyte. And we start at 15 cents at a gigabyte per month. One thing to remember is that transactions are also charged. So per 10,000 transactions into and out of that data storage, you're talking about an additional set. And we also have to deal with bandwidth, that is the amount of information ingress and egress to and from the applications. And that's based on 10 cents in and 15 cents out per gigabyte. So a relatively reasonable cost. So you have a pay-as-you-go type of platform to support your applications in the cloud. Pretty low cost barrier of entry. And for those of you who do more work in the cloud, there are subscription discounts. And coming sometime in the near future are volume licensing discounts not yet available through Microsoft. You also want to take a look at the Windows Azure Service Guarantee, the SLA. Today, service guarantee is for 99.95% uptime. By the way, this is the same as you'll find in Amazon's EC2 environment. And lastly, before we leave this chapter, let's talk about, as a developer, what tools do you need and work with to develop applications for the cloud? Well, the good news is you will typically write applications for Azure using good old-fashioned Windows Visual Studio. You'll need 2008 or 2010. And this must be run as admin. Why? Well, the administrator privileges allow the dev fabric to be spun up. Otherwise, the dev fabric, which we'll talk about in our next chapter, can't be run. You'll also need to run in either Vista or Windows 7. The reason for this is the need for IIS 7 support. Of course, .NET 3.5 and some local instance of SQL Server, either SQL Express or SQL Server, is required. You'll need the Azure SDK. This provides the dev fabric, again, something we'll talk about in the next chapter, which essentially is a 90% replicate of what you'll actually see inside of the cloud. A handy mechanism for testing and developing applications, but it also provides a set of templates, that is Visual Studio templates, to build Azure applications. And if you are building to the app fabric, again, ACS or to the service bus provided by App Fabric, you'll also need the App Fabric SDK. Well, that concludes our first chapter. Return for our next chapter where we talk about the web role and a little bit more about how that dev fabric works. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.